Let's look at the profitability ratios of Apple Incorporation. This is the biggest company in the whole world by market capitalization. And we we'll, we'll look at the profitability ratios ranging from EBITDA margin to net profit margin. Then we we'll look at the return on assets, then return on equity. Remember that we have two types of profitability ratio. We have the margin ratios and we have the return ratios. So the margin ratios compares level of profit to revenue, to the top line item. Why return ratios look at how efficiently has the company been able to generate profits relative to the assets invested and the equity invested by shareholders. So quickly, let's look at it. Now, EBITDA margin, looking at it from 2014, this is a 10-year 10 10 year analysis, looking at it from 2014 to 2023, EBITDA margin has been in the range of 30%. So you can see that 2014, it was 33%. Then, but the lowest of it all is 2020, when I think that was during COVID, and it's understandable when it dropped down to 28%, because the higher this percentage, the better, and 33%, EBITDA margin is good for Apple, and that's why you can see that for the past three years now, they've maintained that at 3%. Maybe it's a target for them to stay around, to be around this region. So that's for the EBITDA margin. So the EBITDA margin has been relatively stable over the years. For the past 10 years, the EBITDA margin, because this is a major ratio, a major metric that investors look at. Next one, let's look at the net profit margin. The net profit margin, initially, it was around 22-23%, then 21%. But after 2020, it originally went on an upward trend, going to as far as 26%, then maintaining the range of 25% for 2022 and 2023. Anything above 20% also is considered good, is considered good in any industry. So, which means... Apple is really making profit and they've tried to maintain their posi this position in order to maintain the, the top, making them the most valuable company, making them the biggest company in the whole world as at the time of making this video. So that is the net profit margin. So investors will be pleased with this, having a return of over 20% on net profit margin. Remember that there are other metrics. You don't look at one metric in isolation. Profitability ratios is not enough for any investor to judge the performance of a company, but it's only part of it. And that's why we are looking at the net profits margin. The next one is return on assets. This talks about in rel relative to the assets being deployed, being invested, being deployed by the, by, the, by the company. What is the profit being generated? What is the return? So initially, as of 2014, it was 17%, then moved to 18% then. As at 2017, you can see that it came down to 2017. But as at the, for the past three years, Apple has been doing has been doing well, which is 27 percent and above. And you can see that 2022 it was 28 percent, 2023 it was 28 percent. So which means Apple is working efficiently to generate good return on the assets invested. Apple is as a manufacturing company, and anything above 15 percent is considered satisfactory with any industry and Apple has, has been able to maintain 27, 28% for the past three years. That's it. That is good and shareholders will be happy with this. Then these KPIs you see in the middle, they are for the current year. They are for the current year, which is 2023. So 2023, it was 33%. Then KPIs in the middle of the charts are for the current year. So the EBITDA margin, 33% is for the current year, which is 2023. This is for the current year under review, which is 2023, 33%, the net profit margin, 25%, the return on asset, 28%, and return on equity, So, which is the last one we want to look at. For the year 2023, it was 156%. So you can see that it was really a surge. Looking at it, looking at the chart, that from 2014, it was 35%, and now... What Apple is now returning to the shareholders is 156%. That's huge, man. Investors will be happy with this. Shareholders will be happy with this. And you can see that for the past three years, Apple has been at the top of its game. 
and that's why it's, it's been able to maintain that top position as the biggest company in the whole world. So that is all I have for us in this video. Later, maybe in another, in subsequent video, we'll be talking about the leverage ratios, the efficiency ratios for the past 10 years as well. But I just want to make this short. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, kindly do by clicking on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever we release a new video on this channel. We'll talk about investments, we'll talk about finance, we'll talk about accounting. So we'll meet in our next video. Stay blessed.